Welcome to Ann Arbor Democracy, a place for conversation about how our local leaders are elected and how political decisions are made, what this looked like in the past and what it looks like now. This project aims to explore the recent history and current reality of Ann Arbor Democracy. This is part three of an interview with Ed Pear, who served as city attorney for Ann Arbor from 1973 to 1975. He was appointed to the job when Republican James Stevenson was elected mayor of Ann Arbor. He left the position when Mayor Stevenson was unseated by a new Democratic mayor, Al Wheeler. In parts one and two, Ed talks about how he was hired, some of the issues his department litigated, and the contested election of 1975. In part three, we talk more about the people, the controversies, and partisan politics at the local level. What was the most fun part of your job when you were city attorney? I mean, obviously it was different different types of law that you wouldn't yeah. have dealt with in private practice, but what was, what was the most fun? I, I enjoyed the council meetings. I mean, believe it or not, I mean, they'd go till two in the morning. I mean, they'd go all <laughs> night. I mean, uh, even but, with a Republican majority. Oh yeah. Well, cause the other people could always raise everything, but no, I mean, you know, the dynamics of it and, uh, and the people, I mean, all the council people, I mean, the majority, minority, they, all of them were very sincere in, in, in what they wanted to do and really were doing what they thought was best for the city, you know, but, uh, uh, but there was, uh, you know, there were a lot of, you know, fun times. I mean, you know, uh, when you look back at it, I mean, at the time it was scary. I mean, some of those demonstrations were kind of scary when they're marching around and everything. And I think we were very fortunate at the time. So Cy Murray was a very good city administrator. I mean, and, you know, he was, uh, and I got to work with him, you know, right from the beginning. So I really in enjoyed that. And, and the department heads, you know, we were, we basically counsel of the housing commit to the housing, uh, department, you know, the treasurer's office, all that. So we worked with everybody at city hall and they're really a lot of good people, you know, good, hardworking people. And, uh, it was enjoyable. And, uh, as I say, it, uh, I, I, I'm glad I had the experience and, uh, uh, I think every, you know, the people that have been the city attorney since then that I've talked to and few that were there before me, I think all have the same feeling that it was really a great experience. You know, I'm so glad I had the opportunity. So what was the toughest part? And maybe you already answered this in terms of just, it was a little bit scary, perhaps when people were demonstrating. What was the, what was the toughest well, part of being city attorney? It's not so much that it's tough, but, you know, no one likes to have people being critical of them when, 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 <laughs> when their criticism is not correct you know i mean well you're I mean, in a fishbowl you're being yeah, observed yeah, right and you, you know, you're being uh unfairly challenged to that now, I, and i'm pretty sure this is after jerry de greek was off council because i remember somebody said something and i remember i said at the council i said somebody questioned somebody and i said well you know what if any of you people feel that i'm not fair or that i'm not doing something uh i'll resign just, just any one of you. And I was thinking afterwards, what a stupid thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but no one ever, but no one, no one said anything. <laughs> Maybe it was like what Jerry Lack said. It could have been worse, right? I, well, I should have <laughs> said, if you have the majority, I'll leave. No, I remember saying, if any one of you, and I looked around, but nobody did anything. <laughs> what did you observe in terms of the difference between the Council of 73 and the Council of 74? Um, when, you know, Kathy was kind of, the, well, and actually, I guess the Council of 75. Yeah. Um, the Council of 75, the Democrats came back. Yeah, and I was only there for a few months after right, 75. Right. But yeah, no, I, again, 90% of, I think, uh, it's probably a fair percent of what you do is not necessarily partisan in any way. You know, I mean, you're handling matters and people want. So, you know, very little, the council part may be partisan, specific items on it. But um, I didn't, you know, I mean, Jerry, Jerry DeGree, and Nancy Wexler in there were very, they were very articulate. They were very committed to their cause. And, you know, and, and I think they enjoyed the battle. And again, it didn't affect me as such. I'm, I mean, I didn't have anybody in there. I'm just sitting there. But, uh, uh, and then after they left, I, I don't think, uh, although Nancy, 
I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Kathy Kozachenko, who I think was just as committed and had just as many things. One, she didn't have the support that Jerry and uh, Nancy had. But uh, so, you know, there's sort of off. But then, but then, you know, you had more Democrats on younger. Um, Carol Jones was on there and um, I'm trying to think who else was, was on Colleen there. McGee. Was Colleen she McGee. Younger? Yeah, she, and she was good. I like, I knew Colleen. And uh, was there anyone else on there? I'm trying to think. Uh, let's. They were the only women. Yeah. And then plus the town, uh, as you know, there are many activists in town that come to council every week and are very strong in their particular causes. And we had, you know, the group that the AATA, you know, for the bus service would always come and were supportive. Uh, other groups that came for the market, you know, for the farmer's market to build that up. And I think they were always there. They were always informed, you know, and, and, and you know, you, you had to know what you were talking because they knew what it should be. So I was on the, the, the Ann Arbor is very fortunate to have, you know, we have plenty of experts. Everybody's a, everybody's an expert here. <laughs> well, not everybody, but there are people who have expertise in, in specific well, areas. The other people think they're experts. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're, but, but they're good. And then the same people uh, came uh, every week to the council meeting. And so, you know, so you got to know them. I mean, they're interesting in, in their own, in their own light and what they, you know, and what they'd accomplished. So now you mentioned earlier that you were attending all the council meetings and you were at the agenda meetings. How how was the agenda formulated? Because I did see, I, I saw one article where um, I think Jerry and Nancy were trying to get something on an agenda and they, they couldn't do it. Like Mayor Stevenson wouldn't let it go on an agenda. And then they tried to add it as an amendment to sewer rates or something. <laughs> they tried to do some sort of backdoor like finesse to get it on the agenda, but it wasn't. Yeah, as I remember, the agenda meetings, I believe, were Fridays. And I don't know, maybe at 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock. And I, I mean, I think, you know, the people would submit what they want on the agenda on that. I mean, and so, because I think they wanted to get everything together so they could get the packets for the council people, you know, over the weekend so they'd have them for, because uh, uh, I think both the Republicans and the Democratic caucuses met on Sundays maybe to go over the stuff. And I assume Jerry and, and Nancy, they caucus when they did. But yeah, uh, but uh, I was going to say, I think the, the mayor, either the mayor or Cy Murray dealt with the agenda. I mean, but I don't remember. I don't remember the specific you're saying about Jerry DeGree because I could see anything they wanted. They, would, they could always try to do it with a motion and they had the second. So they'd always get to a vote. But, uh, you know, if they didn't have the be able to get six votes they couldn't get anything passed you know there's 10 oh. council people and a mayor and, uh, yeah i remember and colleen mcgee colleen mcgee was was good and i think carol jones was on was she on at that um, time yeah carol carol jones colleen mcgee um norris thomas norris. this is in 74 right, yeah. yeah so 74 there were four oh and james kenworthy kenworthy who was the other democrat yes yes no kenworthy is very active he's the one to beat bill colburn okay do you know anything about the the fight around the McDonald's? Yeah, I believe that's when I was there. Um, McDonald's wanted to put a restaurant in Nichols Arcade, and there was a, an old restaurant there. I think it was Betsy Ross had been there for years. You know the place, and I believe the HRP and the Democrats, maybe some other friends didn't want, you know, we don't need a McDonald's, you know, a modern McDonald's. And they fought in Nichols Arcade. And, uh, you know, basically it was, you know, they're, they're, they're the modern business and we don't want that, you know. And so, you know, they, they, they fought McDonald's. It, eventually it passed. But uh, I think there was a, there was a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, council people and a lot of uh, citizens who were uh, against it, just they didn't want, you know, 
rich uh, businesses coming in there. I mean, people came to council, they would be dressed like hamburgers or french fries. <laughs> I mean, uh, the audience was the fun part at council meetings because they came, you know, in dress. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if they were for something, yeah, I remember they, but they, uh, uh, we didn't need that in uh, this uh, nice, uh, long time standing Nichols Arcade, you know, some, uh, you know, present day stuff. I don't think it was anything against McDonald's as such. It was, you know, it was, you know, they're, and maybe it was McDonald's, but you know, they, they were, they were today and we don't want today. Well, the Rainbow People's Party came out against the McDonald's because I was reading about it in the sun and some of it, some of it was McDonald's. Like I, I read one statement where somebody pointed out, you know, this isn't even healthy food. Like this isn't yeah, good. Well, they, like we don't. Well, they are. And they say the restaurant was there and been there long. And Betsy Ross was certainly not healthy food either. But, <laughs> but you know, the Rainbow People's Party, I think we're, we're really not active so much at the council level. I mean, you know, I think they're, I don't know whether it's more statewide or nationally, but they, you know, they didn't, I don't recall them being a big presence at council. The HRP and the students were, I mean, a very active group. I mean, they, they could get a lot of people on short notice. That was, you know, it was before all the social media. Imagine what you could do now if you wanted to get a group there. You mentioned something about cable television. Um, Jerry was telling me that he and Nancy had, had a cable TV show, and they also had a radio show. Did you say that cable TV started in Ann Arbor in the 60s? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, as an attorney, I was involved with getting the first cable franchise for a client in Ann Arbor, and I would think it would have been 60s, you know, 67, maybe something. Like but I think Bruce Warshaw uh, had a TV show. Uh, who He was also a rabbi in, the, in Ann Arbor for Temple Beth Emmeth. But he also, he had a, a, a TV show on the cable TV, and he would have, you know, like council people there every, I think it's one day a week and he'd have, you know, Jerry would be there, the mayor would be there one week. I was on there, I remember once or twice. So he had different local people on his show, you know, sort of a talk show format. Was that the city cable channel or was it just a cable channel? No, that was, uh, that was uh, the, uh, the local, the cable Ann Arbor TV and the local oh, TV, okay. you know, and then uh, Ted Heisel had a radio show on W, um, uh, P yeah, PAG, you know, it was local, and Ted was uh, very, you know, very astute and active politically, and he had, you know, political people on all the time. You know, again, there's a talk show format back then that was sort of unique, but he, 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 he had a good following, and as I say, and Bruce Warshaw had the, uh, the cable TV, and so, you know, people would go home to see themselves on TV. They had... Um, the council meetings were on cable, you know, yes. so all the council meetings were on cable. And that started, that had to start probably in the early 70s or something like that. So that, you know, so cable TV was there, but there were still lawsuits, you know, that hadn't been finalized, you know, on where they could run their cables and what they could do. But um, so, yeah, but I'm sure, uh, again, it, all the time I was there, council meetings were on cable. Have you been involved politically or even maybe after you left, did anybody from the legal department reach out to you to ask you about things that happened when you were there or? Yeah, once in a while, but uh, a, a couple of things. Bruce Laidlaw, who had been there before me and was there when I was there, he was chief assistant. And then he, he was there for maybe 10 years after. So, I mean, the people that were there pretty much knew Everything, you know, everything I knew, they knew, so they didn't have to ask. But uh, occasionally someone would ask or, you know, one of the, uh, if they ran into one of the uh, people on council or something that knew I'd been city attorney, uh, said something or asked. But, you know, I'm still, you know, active citizen, just not active politically, you know, partisan, real big in one party or the other. Were there any issues that happened like in the last 50 years <laughs> um, that made you, that made you, that like you read an article in Ann Arbor News and it, it prompted you to think, oh my gosh, this must be really exciting. If I was in the attorney's office now, 
what did it did it, are there any issues that like sort of struck you as interesting that would have been well, fun to be a part of i can't think of any singular one but i mean at the time i was there a little before even a little after i mean the social change that was really happening in the in the you know middle 70s you know, and Ann Arbor was really sort of on the forefront of a lot of it. I mean, you know, you look back now, I mean, you know, marijuana, uh, uh, aerosol stuff, uh, you know, non-smoking. I mean, all that was kind of started, you know, back near the time I was there and involved in it. I mean, cities would call us and ask for our copies of the marijuana ordinance so they could, you know, they copy it or what's our cable TV ordinance. So, you know, that was always good. No, I, I, th I think everything, I mean, whenever I read in the paper, it all sounds like it'd be interesting. <laughs> I mean, uh, but it's, um, in some ways, it's, 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 well, it's not as partisan because you don't necessarily have two equal parties because it would be going back and forth, you know, now, I mean, basically you have one party that maybe has different groups in it. But, you know, you don't have a strong Republican that's, that's going to win some years and a strong Democrat's going to win the others. You know, I mean, Ann Arbor pretty much is Democratic right now, although there are different degrees of people in the party, you know, it's not all, not all the same. But, no, it's interesting times. How hard was it to transition back to private practice after being a part of the city? It, it wasn't real hard. My office was right across the street from City Hall down to at the time. I could still do things. I couldn't do court things where I was active court. So I could still, you know, do like estate plans for clients. I had a couple of clients I could do their contracts. So I was still able to do things. I'm an early riser. I'd be in the office at seven in the morning and I'd work till I went over to City Hall a little after eight. And then at noon hour, I'd come in and see what calls I had or take care of any mail and then after work. So it wasn't that I completely had left private practice. I still, I still, you know, was part of the office. So uh, it, the, the one thing I did miss is as a city attorney, I had a parking spot under city hall that's pretty uh, great <laughs> which they then took away but uh and i don't even think the city attorney gets it now but i always thought that was one of the best perks of the job <laughs> and you know you mentioned this before we started recording but like you are a townie like you have yeah, lived here no, I, your I've whole been life. Here, right and you know and i i'm pretty much you know i knew the people you know i mean and uh you know as i say knew bob henry well you know his, his practice and uh, i knew many of the council people you know the, the democrats and uh, now i didn't know jerry de greek or nancy wexler i only knew them by reputation but uh, you know many of the city hall department people i had dealt with and known so it wasn't like i was just coming into town and i had to find my way uh, and i knew where to you know where to go to lunch and you know you're right down downtown. So in a way, it was nice. Is there anything that I we haven't talked about that you think is worth talking about? No, I appreciate you asking my opinion on these things. It brings back a lot of good memories and uh, they were good times. Ann Arbor Ann Arbor's a, a good city. It's got, you know, I think having students here changing every four years is good for a community. It uh, keeps you on your toes. Well, I appreciate you talking to me. Oh, thank um, you. This has been a good conversation. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ed Pear's observations are a lesson in democracy. When he served as city attorney, a Republican majority theoretically controlled every vote. Even so, long meetings and passionate debate happened among elected leaders working hard to represent their constituents. On issues of controversy, city council included a diversity of perspectives. Voices of dissent were outnumbered, but not silenced. Sincere advocacy and disagreement happened in public meetings for the community to see. When Ed Pear resigned, Chief Assistant City Attorney Bruce Laidlaw took the job on an interim basis. He was later appointed and served as city attorney until 1991. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be alerted to more content like this.